I made my first ever puff pastry pie in the pie maker this week. So I'm gonna share that with you as well as a dessert that didn't work out how expected. And I've got two other snacks for you as well. If you're new, g'day, I'm Ali. On Monday, I like to post Kmart pie maker hack videos. And then on Thursday or Friday, I do a cleaning video or a grocery haul with a meal plan. If that interests you, please hit subscribe. First up is chocolate profiteroles, or should I say chocolate profiter bowls. So I picked up this white wings packet mix from Coles when it was on special, and I just need to add two eggs and 125 mils or half a cup of water, as well as the packet of pastry from white wings. I put this all into electric beaters and then I just followed their instructions which said low speed for 30 seconds until it was all combined and then increase the speed on high for one minute. Here you can see how the pastry changes with the mixer. Then because I wasn't sure how this was going to work, I just did one in the pie maker. We love profiteroles, so I didn't want the whole bunch to be ruined if it didn't work. <laughs> I was going to risk it. So the rest I did in the oven. Someone might be able to tell me this. Is the difference between a profiterole and a chocolate eclair just a length? A chocolate eclair is longer? I don't know. Can someone tell me? So then I turned on the pie maker for seven minutes. And as you'll see here, what happens as soon as I open it, it deflates. So I put it on for another two minutes and then it was still deflating a bit. It wasn't holding its height. So then I didn't even bother flipping it over. I just closed it again and let it sit in the warm pie maker for three minutes to see if that did anything. So as you can see here, it's pretty flat. I wasn't able to cut it in half to put the custard. And here it is compared to the others, like a massive difference. So I'm grateful that I didn't do the whole lot in the pie maker. But like I said, it's more of a profiter bowl. So instead of putting the custard in it, I put the custard on top and then a dollop of chocolate. It still tasted the same. It definitely was a different texture. I won't be doing profiteroles in the pie maker again, but I thought I'd share it with you because you know, when you're experimenting, not everything turns out right. So we're in this together, guys. Have you tried profiteroles in the pie maker? Here I am just making the custard. So using 200 mils of thickened cream and 100 mils of milk, as well as the custard powder they provide, and then just using a hand mixer to mix it all up. Then using a spatula, I went around the edges to make sure I got all that powder in and mixed through. These were absolutely delicious. Dave actually said he might try making the shoe pastry from scratch. Has anyone else done that? Was it easy? Here's a comparison between the profiterole cooked in the oven and that in the pie maker. As you can see, there is a massive difference between the two of them, but they're both delicious with the yummy custard and chocolate on top. I'm excited to share with you these butter chicken pies. They were absolutely delicious. I must admit, I think we had two or three each as soon as they were made. They were just so good. Maybe that's why I've waited so long to do a puff pastry pie because I knew they were going to be delicious and I knew I was going to eat a lot of them quickly. So for this, I'm using Pampers Puff Pastry. I bought this from Coles when it was on special, as well as their mixed vegetables that are $1.60 and they contain broccoli and cauliflower stalks, as well as peas and carrot. And I used about 200 grams of them, as well as this Passage to India butter chicken. It said to use a kilo of meat or vegetables. I ended up using 800 grams of chicken thighs and 200 grams of mixed vegetables. I wanted to add in the mixed vegetables right from the start so that we kind of know, especially my two and a half year old toddler, that with pies, veggies just come with it. So on the stove, I heated up some olive oil in the frying pan before adding in the chicken thighs. As well as the mixed vegetables. I cooked the chicken and the vegetables until the outside of the chicken was brown before adding in the butter chicken sauce and then I let it simmer for 20 minutes as per the instructions so that the chicken and the vegetables would really have soaked in that butter chicken flavoring. I just regularly gave it a mix to make sure that it didn't get stuck to the bottom. While that was simmering away, I had three sheets of puff pastry and just using the pie cutter, I twisted it around and put each pie piece into the pie maker so the wider bit is used for the bottom and then the smaller bit is used for the lid. 
I certainly didn't make this look easy, but it was the first time I did it and I got quicker and better each time. And then I cut the lids as well. So I ended up using one sheet of pastry for the bottoms and one sheet of pastry just for the lids. Um, but like I said, I only got three out because I thought the next lot I'll do, I'll use, because we got a total of eight pies, I'll use the bases, I'll use the fresh bit of puff pastry that hadn't been used, and then I'll just use the off cuts for the other ones. So when I was filling the pies, I filled them about halfway, and then I put the lids on and I just pushed them down so that the ridges on the edge really showed through. And I also made sure here that they weren't touching, so I just separated them so that they weren't touching. And this was all going into a cold pie maker. And then I put seven minutes on the microwave, crossed my fingers and hoped that it'd turn out well. And then at seven minutes, I opened them and I couldn't believe how good they looked. Talk about beginner's luck. Then for the next lot, I just used the off cuts for the lid. Like I said, we just tried to cover it so there weren't any gaps. I did turn the pie maker off while I was doing this, but obviously it was still warm from the first ones because the results are very different for these second ones. They came out looking really different. I even did a little C for the chicken. So this was our leftover pastry. What do you do with your leftover pastry? I'd love to know in the comments. So isn't this interesting? The tops are not as puffed and golden as the other ones. And I put them in for the same amount of time. They went in for seven minutes. So I closed the lid, put them in for another minute. And the only one that came out really well was that back right one. It turned out well. I was trying to think what happened and I reckon maybe because they were pieces of pastry rather than a complete one when they were cooking there was air escaping so they didn't rise up to the top of the pie maker so then they didn't get that golden crispy feel what do you reckon we love banana cake in our house so this recipe we've used for a couple of years now in the oven so i thought i'd give it a try in the actual pie maker and i'm so happy with how they turned out so over on the stove i've got 125 grams of butter half a cup of sugar as well as just a dribble of vanilla essence and then on low heat i'm just going to let that butter melt Alrighty, if you don't like ooky bananas then turn away now so these bananas have been in the freezer for a while and i can't stand ooky bananas so it took a lot for me to actually do this i must admit so two bananas just in a bowl and then i just mashed them with a fork then I added one egg and mixed that around before using one and a half cup of self-raising flour and then a quarter of a cup of milk. I'm putting the flour in the sifter because my two and a half year old daughter's here and she really likes sifting. So she's gonna do that. While she's doing that, I'm just going to add a quarter of a cup of full cream milk. By the time we've done all this, the butter's melted, so I just mix that together with a wooden spoon before coming over and pouring that into the flour mixture and then mixing it all together. I gave it a really, really good mix. I tried to get as many of those lumps out as possible and as many of those banana pieces to be as squashed as possible too. Then into a cold pie maker I put about a dollop or so up to about halfway in each one of the banana mixture. I plugged it in, put it on for eight minutes and at eight minutes this is how they looked thought oh no what's happened I just checked to make sure that they were cooked inside and they were definitely cooked inside but I was a little bit disappointed with the brownness however when we're eating them this was actually really nice it wasn't burnt it just gave a really kind of crunchy feel and I enjoyed it more than just having the log banana bread like we normally do having these banana muffins 
So into a warm pie maker, because I had turned it off at the eight minute mark, I put in some more banana mixture up to halfway and this time I just put it on for six minutes and this is how they look after six minutes. I ended up getting 15 banana cakes and we really enjoy having them with a little bit of butter on as well. The last one I want to share with you is pikelet. So I just use our standard pancake recipe for this. So a cup of plain flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one egg and one cup of milk. Then my daughter and I mixed it until there were no lumps. And then into a cold pie maker, I scooped in mixture until it probably went to a third of the way up in the pie hole. This is the first time that I'm actually gonna cook keeping the lid open. For every other one that I've done, I always close the lid. But this one I thought, well, when you do it on the stove, which I haven't done since I was a kid, um, it's open and you need to see those bubbles. So I put a timer here. Um, and I waited until I could see the bubbles. And as you can see here, the bubbles really started to form. Four and a half minutes. So I took it out, chopped it open to make sure it was cooked and it was, so I removed them all. And then I added more in. These ones here went for about four minutes, 15 seconds or so. And as you can see, these rose more than the first ones. And then I thought, you know what, let's try what happens if I close the lid. So I closed the lid on the pie maker and this really changed them from pikelets to probably a bit more like muffins, I suppose. And I ended up taking them out about the four minute mark. And this is what they looked like. They were much bigger. Are much bigger so that's the one that had the roof closed and those are the ones that didn't have the roof closed and then i just served it with strawberry jam if you've made it all the way to the end you are awesome thank you so much for supporting my family i really appreciate it have an awesome day bye